This lesson was translated and doubled by Alexandra Labanova. Hello. Today we're going to learn how to weave rectangular bottom, as well as learn how to create and use a tool that will make this task easier. This is a loom for weaving the bottom or any other flat fabric with paper tubes. You can make one with materials lying around your home, such as styrofoam sheets, thick cardboard or fiber boards. Creating your own loom from these materials will allow you to make the space between stakes as small or as large as you want. But the easiest way is to use ready-made archway drywall corner beads. The slits in those sold in the shops nearby me will allow you to keep the distance between the stakes at about 18 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. One side of the bead has slits on it, and the other side has holes. You should place two pieces of the bead on the cardboard so that the slits would be right in front of the bottom holes. You can adhere the part where the slits are or you can leave it loose and fasten it to the cardboard with a couple of binder clips. That will allow you to vary the width of the loom and add convenience to your work. Now let's place the required amount of paper tubes for the stakes on our loom. Put the part with the slits on the table facing away from you. Put the tubes into the holes on one side and into the slits on the other. To calculate the amount of stakes you need, just put your mold right onto the loom. Unfortunately, since the distance between the slits is constant, you might find yourself in a situation when you have to choose to make the bottom a bit smaller or a bit larger than your mold. can weave the bottom using rending or pairing wavy matter. Rending is frugal as fast, but pairing gives you way more sturdiness. For rending, insert one working tube. Start slowly, but steadily, put it in front of the stake, then behind it, then in front again and so on. The stakes will try to escape their places, so you should constantly try and keep them in place. It would be best if you could hold as many stakes as you can in place with your left hand or with your right if you're left-handed. First three rows are the hardest and require lots of attention to them. As you reach your last stake in a row, turn around it, bringing the tube back into the work and continue to weave in the other direction. The weaving on a loom tends to shrink towards the center. There are several things you can do to prevent that. First, use sturdy, well-dried tube for the stakes. Second, don't pull on the edge too hard. Third, use knitting needles or bamboo skewers. I put those with the edge stakes into the weaving. Continue weaving, watching the stakes to stay in their places and the weaving not to shrink. If you're planning to weave the bottom using pairing method, I'd recommend to switch from the straight pairing to the reverse pairing and back. Because if you'd weave the whole piece using one method, it might bend and wouldn't stay flat. Insert two working tubes and weave the first row using regular straight pairing. There's only one stake left. The tube that we usually bring upwards we will this time put under the other tube. Turn around the edge stake and pull up into the work.
the other working tube just bend down. Continue to weave with the same pairing method the other direction. The pattern you'll get this way will be the reversed pairing. Put the working tube behind the stake just as you did before. As soon as you've reached the desired height of the piece, you can put away the loom, pull your needles and skewers out, as well as cut and glue in place your working tubes. All that's left to do is to add some stakes to the other two sides of our basket bottom. To do that, insert smear with glue two bands between every three or four rows. First, prepare the space to insert your tubes into. Then insert the tube Press it down and bend it towards yourself. As soon as the glue is dry, you can lift the stakes up and start creating a new masterpiece. And I wish your every creation to be one.